Common money mistakes that are worse than you think. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Let's see if you're doing some of these things. And if you are, that's okay. No judgment. We're going to make some adjustments to make sure that you make those mistakes into good personal finance practices and habits so you can have a good life. We're going to get right into this right now. The first common money mistake is the lack of work ethic. You know how you be at work sometimes and you're just looking at the clock and like, man, it's only been two hours. I got six hours left. I just have to go through a two hour period three more times and I'll be out of here. It'd be like that sometimes. Like the facial expressions I was making and everything, y'all be making that face. And I'm not going to say that there's anything fundamentally wrong with it. Like it's normal. You've been at work all week. You kind of, you, you want to go home and relax, go back to your family and stuff. I get it. But at the same time, sometimes this warps into something that I've seen far too often. Every place I've ever worked at, I've seen this happen increasingly over the years. It is wild. But what I've seen is people will just wake up some days like, ah, I'm not going to go to work. I'm going to call the boss, tell him I'm sick. Not even realizing on Facebook, they got pictures of them going out somewhere having fun. It's wild to me, but this happens. And a lot of times this happens because maybe they got overtime or maybe they just got a bonus or maybe they just got the refund check. It's, you know, the start of the year. This is when refund checks typically go out, right? And they're like, well, I, I got enough money for the whole month now. So, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking a week off. We're good. But that is holding you back for obvious reasons. You're, you're missing out on what could be extra pay. You don't even know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know if your rent is going to go up. You don't know if inflation is going to go up like crazy this year. You really don't know what's going to happen. And so you don't prepare yourself. Not to mention the fact you hold yourself back in this way too. Because you're not making extra money, you're not able to save and put away more money. So the same way that you're looking at the clock like, ooh, I just have to go through this three more times and the day will be over and you're counting it and you're crunching down the time and you're dividing it and all this stuff. You're doing mathematical acrobatics, but I don't see too many people doing that type of mental exercise when it comes to their money. They don't say, oh, well, I saved $100, so I just need to save $100 nine more times to get to my goal of $1,000. I don't ever hear anybody say that. If we broke it down the same way and kept that same energy about our money, we might be having more money to look back on in our bank accounts and be happy about it. When you, when you look at your bank account, you want to be able to smile. You don't want to be looking at your bank account stressing out, sweating. You don't want to be doing all that, but a lot of these common money mistakes made today puts us in that direct position to be like, ooh, ooh, I ain't looking at my bank accounts today and you say it as a joke, but it manifests as the truth, like in real life, like you really don't want to look at your bank account because you know there's only $5.23 in it. That's crazy. And what makes it crazy isn't that you only have $5.23. What's crazy is that it's by your own doing. You really got to think about that when you're coming into this because you have to have a plan with your finances. But like I just said, so we got to we got to turn that around. We got to start looking at, OK, what's the best way to look at this? I may not want to be here right now, but how can I get the most out of this next six hours at work? How can I enjoy myself, be productive and make money at the same time? How can I do that? When you start asking yourself these questions, you'll start coming up with the answer. When you start asking yourself the questions of how can I save an extra thousand dollars per year, extra few thousand dollars per year, you're going to start coming up with ways to do it. And a lot of those answers are just coming to work. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next thing. Telling ourselves that we can't afford things that we know that we need. For example, how many people have you heard say, I can't afford to eat healthy because it's extremely expensive. I'll go broke if I try to eat healthy. Stuff like that. Living a healthy lifestyle is not as expensive as people say it is. Yes, it's expensive when you're spending money in a bunch of other areas already and then you spend money on healthy foods and, you know, health supplements and things like that, like vitamins for example, because now it's one more thing that I'm spending my hard-earned money on without even realizing, well, it's my fault that I have an expensive apartment, an expensive car with the more expensive car note and it's appreciating while the car itself is depreciating. It's my fault I got into credit card debt and now I have to spend several months paying off a few thousand dollars because the interest rate is so freaking high. It's like I'm taking a step backwards if I don't put a lot of money into it every single month. It's my fault that I spent $400 on Uber Eats last month. 
just because I was too lazy to go out and get something or to go stand up in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying, to start cooking. That's my fault. We have to take some accountability for our action. People say it all the time. I can't afford to invest. I can't afford to invest in myself or into an online course. I can't afford to improve my life in some way. But then they literally prove why they can't afford it. And it's a lot of times I see people in chains. I see people with Apple watches. Those things are not cheap. Apple, look, Apple products are upward of Five hundred, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars. Even if you're on a payment plan, you found a way to afford it. But when it comes to luxury and comfort and being in our comfort zone, we spend an awful lot of time finding a way to do it, and we spend an awful a lot of money just to say that we have things. And then you mess around and customize the strap. That's like another fifty dollars. Name one person that you know that doesn't have a gigantic flat screen TV at their place right now. So if you can afford these things, you can definitely afford the other things. That's all I'm saying. Forget about talking about the coffee at Starbucks. Forget about talking, you know what I'm saying, about Netflix. For, forget those, those are small expenses. I'm talking about the big things that I see on everyday people every single day that then say that they can't afford to do things that will definitely have a positive impact on their lives. Like sure, it's nice to have these things, but if you have an Apple Watch, if you have an iPhone, flat screen TVs, game consoles, and then you have upgraded versions of everything, you can't sit there and tell me you can't afford things. You literally have the capacity to afford these things. You're just choosing to buy things that keep you in your comfort zone and you're okay with that. And I'm not judging you. I'm keeping it real with you so you can understand what I mean when I say these are some common money mistakes that people make every single day that are 1000% worse than you actually think because it seems harmless, but it's harmful to your pockets, which therefore makes it harmful to your future if you're not managing your money properly. Moving on, speaking of affording things, whenever you can't afford something, you will find a way to afford it if you truly want that thing. Let me give you an example. A lot of people want to move into a house. Right. And a lot of times we don't have the money like the cash, especially with the, the, with the housing market being where it is right now and where it was for the last few years. Houses are expensive. Therefore, the down payment is a lot of money. And so what people have been doing is they've been borrowing against their 401ks at work that they've been building for the last few years, sometimes decades. And they use this money towards the house. And sometimes they use half of it, a quarter of it, the whole thing, and they think that it's beneficial. And I'm not making fun of anybody, but this is not beneficial. It is directly going against your future. You just took something that you were putting your money into that your company was matching you on probably 50 cents per every dollar. So let's say you have $200,000 in your 401k. Your company just matched you $100,000 to that. Not to mention how much it's grown over the years because of the stock market. All that growth, consistency, and hard work has now been redirected toward a temporary financial goal of buying a house. And what happens when you do that is the money you take out of your 401k gets taxed like crazy. It gets counted as income. So now you're in a different tax bracket and it's going toward a house that may be your dream house. But the fundamentals of this is if you have to do that, you're probably buying more house than you can afford. I'm not some real estate expert, but I'm very good at math. And the math to me doesn't add up if you're taking years of growth and putting it into something that will not grow at the same rate that your 401k did. You would have been better off leaving that money in there, not getting it taxed, because now the money that you're taking out of it loses value. It could have man maintained its value and it could have kept riding up. And if we have like a crazy, like bullish market in the stock market, oh man, that 401k is going to take off. I get that houses are good investments. I get that houses are things that everybody wants because a lot of people don't want to stay in an apartment their whole lives because let's face it neighbors can be pretty annoying but you really have to weigh your pros and cons before you borrow against like your 401k and do that because that's really hurting you in the future that's hurting your retirement and it's going to be in your house sure but like you don't really know what's going to happen with that you don't really know how much money you're going to get in return from buying a house and you'll still be paying off that house every single month 
but you won't have as much in your 401k, which means you'll have to start putting more money back into your 401k to get back to where you were. And it's going to take way longer to get back to where you were. These are the things that you want to think about. And the good piece of advice I could give you is when it comes to your money goals, you want to be selfish with each category. So if you're saving money, no, the money that goes here is only for saving money. For investing, no, this money is only for investing. I'm not mix matching or anything like that. This money that goes in here, this is going towards credit cards no matter what. This dollar has a name on it. This dollar has a name on it. And stick to that plan. When you start mix matching, you start doing things that aren't as beneficial. You start robbing Peter to pay Paul. And that right there, that ain't that ain't going to help you. In the long run, it is not going to help you. Focus on singular things even if you have to focus on one thing at a time that's better than mixing and matching and oh i'm gonna rob my savings account to then invest then the investment goes down and now you're feeling sorry for yourself instead of paying off debt i'm gonna put this toward my savings now your debt is going up like you have to balance these things out and these are common mistakes that people make every day that they don't really think about. It's kind of like not even an afterthought. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going to make this move. Boom, boom, boom. We're good. And that's not going to help in the long run. It's not. It's not going to help. What is going to help is if you draw out a plan for yourself and say, okay, well, these are the top three things that I want to fix this year. I want to be completely debt free by the end of this year. I want to have five figures in my savings account by the end of this year. And I want to start investing in a Roth IRA by the end of this year and at least have $1,000 set up for it. These are specific intangible goals that you can write down and then break them down to little bite-sized pieces and make sure you get there every step of the way. That's how you do it. But just don't put yourself in a position where you're shooting yourself in the foot. Uncle Sam's waiting outside for you in the dark alley, waiting for you to walk by so he can hit you in your kneecaps with a baseball bat because you made an unwise decision and borrowed against yourself. And now you're getting taxed like crazy on your 401k. Wait till you retire for them to tax you on your 401k. Don't, don't do it now so early on. Because the same way they're taxing you now, you're going to build it right back up. You're going to get taxed right again. So now you're moving backwards. Does that make sense? Don't buy so many things that you don't need and then tell yourself and then tell the world that you can't afford to buy certain things because they're expensive. I don't want to ever hear that again. Look, that is one of the most irritating things to hear when you see people walking around with all these luxurious things on. I've seen lots of Gucci bags. I've seen lots of high-end cars. I've seen motorcycles, jackets, handbags, all these things that make you look better and more successful and more rich on the exterior. But inside, we all know what I've been saying. Wealth is what you don't see. So that's the problem with being fake rich. That's the problem with trying to portray an image that is really not you. Every, everybody thinks, oh, well, well, they got it like that. But then, but then if you wanna go on a business venture or if you wanna start investing money into the stock market, Oh, well, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. You really can. So you'll be seeing from me shortly videos on breakdowns, how to invest your first $100, how to invest your first $1,000. And I'm going to make it very real life to you that you can do these things without a lot of money. But don't say, oh, well, I can't afford it. I, I'm just saying, like, some people really can't afford those things, granted. But I'm, all I'm saying is you have to challenge that status quo of telling yourself what you can and can't do because you are going to be your own biggest enemy. You are going to be your biggest limiter if you keep telling yourself things like, I can't do this, I can't do that. You need to start asking yourself, well, right now, how can I gain the ability to do this? How can I start investing in the stock market? How can I start investing in myself? How can I start making wise financial decisions? How can I cut back? on my financial vices you start asking yourself that question now you're building now you're building the person that you ought to be when it comes to personal finance decisions anyway i know this has been a relatively short video but i wanted to break these things down these are very common financial mistakes that i don't think i've directly addressed enough on this channel so i just wanted to tell you how i felt about it tell you why it impacts you negatively and what to do about it and the next video that I recommend you watch on this channel is 
how to achieve your money goals in 2023. So check it out. Watch that video next. It's going to help you set out a plan. It's going to help you prioritize your goals and it will help you get there probably in a quarter of the time that it normally would have taken you to do it. So make sure you watch that. Make sure you take good notes and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done it. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.